Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tan. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In front of me here, I've got this 27 inch mid 2017 iMac and it's running very, very slowly. The most common reason is because this still came with an internal mechanical hard drive. And this means that the drive needs to spin in order to access data or the operating system. And so this is like a very inefficient way to run this computer. What you really want is a solid state drive like this. This has no moving parts. It's far superior to the internal uh, hard drive if you've got one. I've done a previous video of this before using an, an older iMac. What I'd like to be able to do is update this for the kind of post Catalina operating system. So this is going to be relevant for kind of all future iMacs. The, the issue with putting this inside the iMac is that it's kind of tricky. The screen itself has got this kind of adhesive glue layer all around the side and you need specialized tools in order to kind of get it in and you need to replace all the adhesives. It's quite challenging for a lot of people but this method of installing it externally is going to be much faster, much cheaper. So first thing that we're going to need is a solid state drive. So I'm using this 500 gigabyte WD Blue. I'll leave a link to this in the description. The other thing as well is we're going to need an enclosure. So I'm going to leave a link for this Sabrent enclosure. These ones are special because they are UASP, which means that they are more suited for operating system main drive connections. I prefer using this combination of drives because there's no kind of tricky firmwares for the solid state drive or anything to go wrong in the booting process. I've used other drives which don't work in the same way that I want them to work. They don't boot into the drive automatically. So this combination is pretty much surefire going to work. So what's different from the previous ways that I'm doing it is that I'm not going to be using a carbon copy cloner to clone the drive. I'm going to be installing the operating system directly. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. First thing is that with these Sabrent drives, they're toolless. All we need to do is uh, open the drive, just push this like that. And then we take our two and a half inch solid state drive. We need to remove this sticker, of course. And then all we have to do is to line up the ports there. So we've got the power and the data. We just kind of line them up, slot it in at a slight angle, and then push it down. And that's basically installed. We'd put our cover on top like this. And then I'm going to plug this into the back of my iMac using USB 3. So you might think, oh, USB 3 is not that fast, but it is definitely fast enough to run an operating system and it's definitely faster than the internal drive. So I've plugged this in now, so I want to show you how to boot into the recovery mode. So this is kind of an all purpose universal way of doing this. I'm going to log into the recovery mode. I could do it internally, but there's something wrong with the operating system internally for the hard drive and it's very, very slow. So what I'm going to do is to switch on the computer and then go into the recovery mode. So once I've got my solid state drive plugged in like this, I've got my kind of Windows keyboard here. This one's the keys are a little bit faded. So what I like to do is to, instead of holding Command R, that gets you in recovery mode. I tend to find this method a bit more effective. So what I do is I press the power button and then I hold down Alt. This is also the option key on a Mac keyboard. So once this recovery menu has come up, I can see here the macOS installer. This is basically a failed uh, Big Sur update, so I'm going to ignore these. Then what I can do is press Command R. On a Windows keyboard, it's the Win key and the R key, so I'm going to press that. This kind of gives better feedback about what's ha actually happening. So once I press that, the screen will just boot straight into the recovery mode. So this part can take a little bit of time, so just give it a few minutes to, to boot in. So now I've gone into the recovery menu. So what the first thing I want to do is to go to Disk Utility and then press Continue here. And that's going to give us the Disk Utility menu. And now that we've got Disk Utility up, what we're going to do is click on the Sibrent Media. So this is the enclosure that we've got with the solid state drive inside it. And it's saying that we have 500 gigabyte solid state drive here. So what we need to do is to initialize this. So I'm going to go here and click Erase. So what I normally do is I call this the Macintosh SSD. That's the solid state drive. And I'm going to format it as an APFS drive. That's going to help us install the latest versions of the operating system. So I'm just going to press Erase and then let that continue. So it's gone ahead and created these partitions for us. We just press Done here. And I'm just going to click on the red X button in the corner and bring us back to the menu. So if you're not already connected to Wi-Fi, make sure that you are connected to the Wi-Fi. So now I'm going to click Reinstall Mac OS. So it's going to install whatever the operating system of the firmware of this computer has. So what I'm going to do is install macOS High Sierra first, create an account, and then we're going to inline install this to the latest version of the operating system. I'm going to click Agree here and Agree. Okay, the important thing is to click on the orange Macintosh SSD. So the orange icon means that it's an external drive. We don't want to install it on the internal drive here. We want it on the external. So we click Install here, and then we're just going to let that run for a little bit. So we're just going to do the next stage, which is to enter our location, Q, 
keyboard. Then we're going to go into our Wi-Fi network. Then we'll press continue here. And at the moment, we don't want to transfer any data. I'm going to do a, an inline upgrade first before we transfer the data. So just click no here. We'll set this up later. Skip. Press agree here. And I'm just going to give it a generic name. And uh, we're just going to enter a generic password because we're going to delete this account so that I can transfer the data over. Of course, you could just uh, start this account as a brand new iMac as well. But in this video, I'm planning to get all the data from the internal drive copied over to the external drive. Press continue here. Now we are logged into the desktop of this Mac. So the main thing I'm going to do is to just do an update. So this is on High Sierra. We want to use the latest one, which at the time of recording is Big Sur. I'm sure that Monterey would work too. I'm just going to click on the top left icon here and then click about this Mac. And then we are going to click software update here. Let's continue. If we have no updates here, then what we can do is go to the search bar and type in Big Sur, and then we'll find the utility for opening Big Sur here. So this is the upgrade path for this. So if we don't have Big Sur or it'll be Monterey in the next version of the operating system, then you can just do a search for it and you'll find it on the App Store. So just press continue here, agree. And we're gonna make sure that it installs on the external drive, not the internal drive. Just press continue here, type in the password that you set, and then just allow that to continue downloading and then installing. So now that the update has completed on the solid state drive, we're just going to log in now and just complete this uh, upgrade process. So we're now on the Big Sur operating system. So we're still booted into this external solar state drive at the moment. And what I'd like to be able to do is pull the data from the internal drive to make this a kind of complete migration. However, you could just technically use this as a fresh computer. It will run much faster than on the internal mechanical drive. Anyway, this is the step for if you wanted to transfer data, we're gonna click on the top right hand side of the screen and uh, get to the spotlight settings. And I'm gonna type in migration assistant and that's going to come up there it's also in the applications uh, utilities folder i'm just going to click continue here type in my password and that's kind of going to close all the windows you have open and then we're going to migrate so now we're getting onto the window where it's asking us where do we want to transfer information from now i'm going to select my passport for mac which is the external drive that i've got my time machine backup on and then click continue and then i'm going to restore this particular backup which was made a few days ago so i'm going to press continue here so here we're just going to click continue because we're gonna say yes to transferring all of this data and then let that continue until it finishes. So now that we've logged into the solid state drive, we're quite happy with the way that this migration has worked. So the next step is to erase the internal drive. So the, the way to do that is to go into the top right hand corner, go into spotlight to do a search. I wanna type in the word disk utility, press enter. And then what we have here is a separation between the external drives and the internal drive. So we're booted into the external drive right now. So what I normally recommend that you do is you go into the internal Macintosh HD and then go into erase. So the reason you want to erase it is because you don't want to accidentally log into the internal slow drive. We want to log into the external fast solid state drive wherever possible. And if you have the internal drive, that means that you might accidentally log in and then start working and then you realize it's too slow and you've got two copies of your data. So basically what you want to do is go in here and press erase and then you want to fully erase this. Normally I would rename this to internal hard drive or something like that and then press erase and then you're back to normal. As long as this solid state drive is attached, that'll mean that whenever you have this plugged in, it will automatically log into this one. Another thing that you can do to ensure that it always logs into the solid state drive and not the internal drive is to press the Alt key when you switch on the computer. So I've shut it down now. I'm gonna press the power button then hold the option or Alt key on my keyboard. I'm just gonna let that boot up. So now we have our selection of drives that we can log into. So what you can do is use the cursor keys of your keyboard to highlight the Macintosh SSD, the orange external drive, which is this one here. When you hold down the control key, this arrow turns into this circle arrow. And what that means is that it will always log into this one by default. So that's another way to ensure that you're always logging into the correct external solid state drive. 
So this computer is now going to be able to permanently boot from the faster solar state drive. Now this is a relatively permanent solution. This is going to work for all kind of Intel Macs up to 2020 pretty much. This could be a permanent solution I'd say. You can just have this hanging near your computer. Obviously you don't want to move it too much while you're actually using the actual computer itself. Uh, but as long as you could you know, stick it on the back or put it underneath then this is a relatively stable solution. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.